All right, so welcome everybody here to the life cycle of a foodscaping client. We're gonna go ahead and get in present mode here. So basically, for those of you who are new to the foodscaping world, meaning you're new to having a foodscaping company, working for a foodscaping company, or you are dreaming about having a foodscaping company, I wanna walk you all through kind of what this whole process looks like for us at Custom Foodscaping here in St. Louis, Missouri. Excited to be talking about this. I feel like this is just a really ingrained part of our business now. It's just kind of the things that we live and breathe. And um, and I remember getting started with this and it kind of felt a little bit intimidating. Didn't know where it all, where, where one step went to the next step. What do we do when this happens? And so I want to walk you all through that and maybe you'll find this to be a little bit helpful. So here's a little bit of a map of what the, um, the, the life cycle looks like for us in general. And this, you know, we're gonna go through this and flesh it out more, but mostly, you know, a client, we're in the top left-hand corner, a client finds out about custom foodscaping. Um, and that's usually through either like a website search. Sometimes they find like Foodscaping St. Louis or Edible Landscaping St. Louis, Permaculture St. Louis, all those things help people find us. And then we've got a Facebook, Instagram presence um, that's really helpful. And then we have, um, a few times even gotten media coverage, like written a pitch to, you know, a food magazine or a little local magazine in town, a gardening magazine, say, hey, um, we've got this going on. We could even offer to write an article for those magazines in, um, in exchange for some publicity. So regardless, maybe a friend of a friend, um, you know, we get our, <clears throat> somebody finds out about us, they fill out our intake form, we offer a consultation, then um, we do the consultation out of their site, that, that consultation, if there's a follow-up, if it's, um, we're gonna give them a proposal, do some design and installation work, uh, and then we're gonna end up at the, uh, the final, like ongoing work with them is either as a coach, doing coaching or maintenance. So that's kind of the life cycle as it works for us. So I'm gonna walk us through all the different steps there. Okay, so before we even get a client, we have to talk a little bit about getting the word out and there's a million ways to do this. I'm gonna just share some of the ways that have helped us, you know, and some of the things I've done to, um, to get clients brought into our business. So first and foremost, I think teaching classes is a big thing for me. You know, if you have a lot of knowledge to share, you know, giving that knowledge away um, is the easiest way, I think, to get new clients. So I went out and taught classes at the library, uh, different gardening clubs, different green organizations, all of these places are looking for speakers for sometimes. So go ahead and speak in front of those places and you can often get you know, in front of a lot of people. Um, I'd also encourage folks to just do free consultations and designs to friends and family. You know, I still feel like, um, and I've been doing this four years now, like we have so every year our professionalism is going way way up and um, I look back on the things I was doing a few years ago and it's like even though people were paying for that you know it was not super professional not as professional as I would like but I was just trying to hop in and and make things um, you know make things happen with the with the limited skills that I have and I've kind of gained more skills over the years but you really learn a lot at the beginning some of these designs and consultations proposals can take forever um, when you don't really know what you're doing. But um, hopefully our handouts um, as a part of this con as a part of this presentation will help you all with that. So offer those free uh, consults. Um, Facebook group sharing, I think is really helpful. Like here in St. Louis, we have a vegetable gardeners group and a fruit tree group on Facebook and things like that. And so those are places where not necessarily like advertising, but kind of tactfully helping to answer questions you know if you're somebody who has knowledge about fruits and vegetables and um, you can kind of pop in there and maybe try to be somebody who contributes a lot of answers and maybe through that you can um, find a polite way of you know throwing in your business sharing pictures of from your business saying oh you know the answer to that question kind of lies here and um i yeah i think i mentioned in the previous page like writing pitches to local media outlets can really help get exposure. So sometimes you can write a pitch and have them interview you, or you can um, actually write an article for them. And hopefully they'll, they'll run with that and that'll give you exposure. 
okay, so now somebody's found out about you. You know, you've done the friends and family thing. They've told their friends now. So now people are starting to come to you. So what does it look like for somebody to actually um, come into your Foodscape network? So the way it works for us and everything I'm going to share with this presentation is just, this is how it works for us at Custom Foodscaping. There's not a one way to do this, right? But this is just what we've decided on. So at the top of our webpage, we've got schedule a consultation. So people will often click on that because that is the first step to do anything with us, no matter what service you're looking for. It starts with a consultation. So then we ask people to fill out this information. We've got, you know, things like name, email, zip code is really important because we really want to know where people are in town. St. Louis metropolitan area is massive. So we do a lot of scheduling based on zip code so that we can try to do, to be in two areas, you know, if we have two places we need to be in one day, we can make sure they're in a similar part of town. Um, also really important is to get people's phone number. Um, a lot of times, like confirming consultations, email isn't great. A lot of times you show up at somebody's door and you're ringing the doorbell and they never answer and you're like, ooh, um, I could really like to call them right now. So good, it's always good to have the phone number and you'll get it again in the questionnaire, which we'll talk about in a minute. You wanna know what people are interested in. I think this is really helpful. Some people just want a consultation and we do design, installation and coaching as well. So we wanna know what people want. And then we really want to know about their foodscaping dreams. We want to know what brings them to us, what they're thinking, what they have in mind. And then we really want to know how they heard about us. You know, that's, that's the most important thing is like, where did people find out about us? Because if we don't get that good information, then we don't know where to continue to put our efforts. All right, so an email arrives. This is kind of what that email looks like, right? Um, that email that is on our website, this is a um, like a plug-in or something like that, you know, for um, our... It goes right into our email. So this email then comes right from our Squarespace website. So this comes in and then boom, we get all this information and um, this is what we have to go on that helps us with a, uh, an email response. Okay, so then we're gonna have an email response like this and I, this is one of the handouts that you all have as a downloadable. Um, you can see how you know, we talk about specific things that I want to point out. We, we talk about how, you know, our first step is going to be an on-site consultation. This consultation can just be a consultation or it can be, you know, lead to design or installation. Um, we tell them the price right away. Our consultations are $200. Um, we ask them to fill out this questionnaire. So we link the questionnaire. That's really important. We have to have a questionnaire before we show up to somebody's house because that gives us all the answers to what we're looking for, you know, it forces them to think about things that they haven't previously thought about. And we love, love, love when people share pictures, links, pictures, boards, all of those things. When people have something in mind, when you encourage them to think about what they want before they actually have you out, you end up with, it's just so much easier to execute on what people are, you know, really dreaming about. Because a lot of times they have it in their head, but, you know, communicating that to you is very challenging. And then as you can see, I finish the email off with some three different available times that um, make sense for me to come out to visit them. And then at the very bottom, I've got our services page so that they can read all about our services. What you can't see at the bottom of this, it also has a link to our website um, to make sure that if they haven't checked out our website, sometimes people are like just referred from a friend and they don't even know the really, you know, the name of your company. They may just have gotten an email. So you want to make sure that they can see what you've done previously. All right, so then you are going to send that email and then you're going to have a questionnaire at some point that is going to get completed. So you want to review that questionnaire. You know, I make sure to review that questionnaire before going out for the consultation. And I try to do it very close to the consultation. Um, and sometimes I'll, depending on the, the house, you know, I'll always Google, I'll go to Google Earth and check out what's going on on the site from aerially before time. So I'll kind of do that when I'm doing the questionnaire. That's super important is to just see what is, what things look like from above. You can even see how things changed over time. And there's another class about using Google Earth. So y'all can learn about that in, in that class. Um, so you looked at the map, you've looked at their questionnaire, and that gives you a good idea of what they're interested in. Okay. So then you get to the consultation. Here's a little bit of the life cycle of the consultation. So you get to that console and I usually say something like, you know, I'd love to just start out by getting a lay of the land. I'd like to understand 
some of the usage of your current property? What are the places you hope to develop? What are the places that your dog you want to for sure reserve? Where, where are the places that you, your kids are playing and you really want that to be a kid, uh, kid only spot? Or do you have, you know, is that flexible? Um, tell me about places where weird things are happening with the land. Maybe there's a wet spot. Maybe there's a sandy spot. Maybe there's um, an area where you have really bad drainage. I, I want to like plant. I want to know about plants that you like. Tell me about plants that you don't like. Give me the lay of the land. I want to understand it all so that we can understand what kind of changes you're okay with. You know, that's, that's my spiel to the client there. Um, I want to identify their priorities. Sometimes people are, have a lot they want to talk about. You know, it's really, I'll often say like, what are the main priorities you want to talk about in our consultation? If, and, um, you know, what are the things that we, cause I want to make sure that we get to those. I want to make sure you have good takeaways and for the things that we don't get to, maybe, you know, I can follow up with some resources. So I want to understand while I'm there, like design style and plants that they love plants they want to incorporate. So if they haven't responded with like Pinterest board and pictures and things like that, I really want to try to understand like their design style and I'll have my phone like on the ready and try to feel them out. Like what, what's the, what's the current design style of the neighborhood of the landscape that they are in and what kinds of things do they love? You know? Um, and then I'll even like whip my phone out right there and try to get some pictures up that maybe speak to what they're interested in. I've got a, you know, um, there's so many amazing pictures of edible landscapes and raised bed gardens on, on Pinterest. So sometimes I'll just open up the Pinterest app and we'll look at different pictures together and see what they're interested in. Um, I want to understand, you know, um, the, the flow of people, of water, of animals. So what that means is a little bit different than like getting the lay of the land. I want to understand, I'm going to actually look at where is water coming off of downspouts? Where's water coming off from neighbors? I'm going to ask like, do you have deer moving through the property? What's their wildlife pattern? What other critters do you have and where do they live? Um, I want to understand where people are coming in and out. Are there, you know, it, when people leave the back door, when people come around the side, where are they going and, and where are they, what's that pattern look like? And I think all that really helps inform the, the overall design. Um, that's sometimes called the, you know, a sectors analysis. And that's a really helpful thing to do. Before you're done, you want to make sure you communicate next steps and timelines. So I'll often say something like, you know, basically, um, you can expect to hear from me with a proposal for your design in roughly a few weeks. You know, we've got, we're, we're really busy with installs right now, but in a few weeks from that, I'll have time to get you a proposal. And then, you know, by the, uh, by, by the beginning of the new year, you know, I'll make sure that we are going to get you on the schedule and, and figure something out for the spring. Um, so giving people that next step timeline, especially if you're busy, you know, it's super important to just not lie to people about when they can expect to hear from you. You know, I'll often, I would always say, you know, reach further than you, you know, make it a pleasant surprise when they hear from you say, you know, you very well may not hear from me in three weeks for three weeks for a month. I just want you to know you are totally in the queue. I've got, you know, I, I, I promise you, I will follow up here, but um, just be patient with me. Um, or you might have a ton of time in your hands. You might say, you know, I've got time to work on this tomorrow. So please, um, you know, take a look at your, your inbox and, and I'll be looking forward to getting with you tomorrow. Finally, before you leave, take a million pictures, take a video. A lot of times I'll walk around with a video and um, you could just pause the video at any given point and use that to get imagery that you need where you may not have taken a photo of the right angle. You know, I would say taking the extra five minutes here to be really thorough, get different pictures from different angles is really helpful. And then it's so much easier to collaborate with other people on your team to, um, and, and makes it really, so you don't have to go back, which is the worst thing. If you have to go back to a site when you, uh, when you get an accepted proposal or something like that, or you get a, a design proposal, um, this will really help with, uh, those pictures can be really helpful. Okay. So then after you've done the consultation, we do designs for free like this, this, we, this is a raised bed garden design that we do. Um, this is very simple and something like this takes, you know, about 15 minutes, um, to, to put together once you already have a template that you're kind of working from, you know, maybe 15 minutes is maybe it's half an hour, but it's, it's short, it's simple, and, um, 
and this we just give away for free. And even in some, some designs like this, we'll have a few fruit trees. Or maybe at the, you know, at the top of the screen, I remember this client kind of um, above the trampoline, they wanted some raspberries. So you know, we would demarcate where the raspberries are going on that design, even if we, let's say we had some raspberries and a few fruit trees, great. Um, that would all kind of be for free. And they would get that in a design in accompaniment with their proposal. So their proposal would be um, it come in an email, design is attached, and it says all kinds of things. This is a downloadable that you all have access to. So check out um, this proposal here so to get some ideas of how we do that. This is a more extensive project, which is just gives you an idea of different facets of a proposal. So first we, you know, we start with the basic information. Then we have what we call the scope of work. We got to spell out exactly what these clients are going to get and um, in a proposal form, you know, we, we have to write it out so that we're on the same page. So they get exact, they know exactly what they're getting into and what they're paying for. Cause you know, this stuff isn't cheap. So we say, we're going to build this many beds. We say, how tall are the beds? What's going in the beds? Drip irrigation is coming with it. You're getting an obelisk. Oh, what's an obelisk? Here's a picture of an obelisk where we're building a cold frame. Um, I'm seeing here now, like there's no, there's no picture here of a cold frame, but then it is in the design. So there's a picture of a cold frame. So they, they have an exact expectation of what this cold frame is going to look like. We tell them what the pathways are going to be mulched with. We tell them, you know, um, timeline information. We say, you know, some planting is going to be in 2021, the rest of it in spring 2022. We say how many plants are going to be filled in. We said 180 perennial plants to fill in the landscape. Perennial plants meaning they're not trees and shrubs. And those perennial plants, that plant palette is in their design, which is also a download. Um, and we just list plant palettes out. So then we say exactly what they're going to get. We list the different fruits that they can anticipate. They're going to get a che. They're, um, they're, they're going to get a service berry, blah, blah, blah. They know they're not only in the design, but then we spell it out. These are the plants that you're going to get. And sometimes <clears throat> I'll leave that part out. You know, that might be overkill. If it's in the design, sometimes we'll just say, um, we will plant planting of all trees and shrubs in the attached design. That's some, something that uh, I'll do sometimes. Notice um, I said something. I said the che tree, which is a unique kind of fruit tree. Che, as these are hard to source of larger size, this tree can be expected to be about three feet tall upon planting. Wow, so that learn that one the hard way, right? You, you setting client expectations ahead of time before they send you money is just crucial. So make sure that people know what they're getting into. Landscape plants are way bigger than foodscape plants, oftentimes because we just don't have access to the same size material. So just setting that expectation that um, things aren't going to be that big when they when in in those cases, especially when you know you have a small plant, um, put that out ahead of time because guess what? If they say, you know what, three feet's too small for that che, can we do a replacement? Great. I get something that, you know, I'll find a bigger tree that um, have better access to big things. I'll often say um, things like, you know, moving to the backyard, you got 20 feet of linear raspberries, 20 feet of linear blackberries. I try to, in, when things are planted in an area like that, I try not to pigeonhole myself by saying how many plants are going to be planted there. Because basically, I just, I'm going to, I'm going to plant the area. You know, I might plant that at two feet spacing. I might plant it at two and a half. I might plant it at three foot spacing. Um, some of it depends on how big the plants are. Some of it depends on what you read and who you're learning from. And so I think it's just easiest for you to say how many feet of raspberries or blackberries you're going to plant um, if you're doing a, a hedge planting. You know, you might say 80 foot hedge of elderberry. You know, you don't need to necessarily say how many elderberry plants it's going to be, although that might be very well reflected in your design. You can see, I'm, I'm trying to be really specific here, all plantings to receive an individual deer fence. So that's really important, you know, that I'm spelling that out. You're going to get a deer fence. In this case, you know, it's in a, a deer pressured area. Um, spell everything out that you can. You, you never regret that one. Um, we talk about the phased approach here. In this case, you know, we did phase one in October, and then we say we're going to come back and do phase two in April. So We've got things on there. We, we ask that clients contact the dig right. Dig right is our local like, you know, utilities marker. So that way um, all the utilities are marked before we get there. 
And then I, this is so important, installation dependent on the removal or move of fallen trees in the approximate location of the blackberries and raspberries. So a lot of times there's existing things going on, like, um, you know, a tree needs to be taken down or there's currently a swing set. You, so a lot of times, like, let's say there's a swing set, they're like clients, like the kids are grown up, but the swing set is still there. And we'll have the swing set out of the way before you get here so that you can do your, you know, garden. You show up, swing set's still there. What do you do? You, know, you got to move the swing set out of the way and then you just lose all that time. Sometimes it's a big deal. Sometimes I've had experiences where there's a bunch of like landscape rock in the, in a bed on top of landscape fabric. And they say, you know what? Well, oh yeah, we can get that rock out of there. We've got, you know, our neighbor would love it. Then you get there, the rock's not there. You've got to dig it out, put it somewhere to the side. Specifying this stuff and saying things like, you know, client to have all drainage rock removed prior to our arrival and then then if you have that in in writing then you're in a much better position to say hey you know this is going to take us six more hours to remove all this stuff so that's going to have to be a part of our budget and then as soon as you have that conversation i would send them an email and say hey just recapping what we talked about it's going to take us six more hours to um remove that and that's going to be you know an extra three hundred dollars of labor so um that you have that in writing and then i would get that you know, uh, try to get that response as soon as possible, you know, and, and move on forward there. All right. So this is a design. Now, I mentioned before that this is free. This you pay for. Um, I have a design proposal for you all in your um, handouts. It's not for an extensive design proposal like this. You can, you know, they can be small or large. But basically, if it's more complicated than this, you know, if it's going to take me a few hours, they're going to get charged for the design. And the design comes before the proposal for installation. So I might leave a consultation. This, this, this folk, you know, these folks, they wanted a really extensive food for us. They, they wanted to do it themselves. And they wanted to know all kinds of things about how to do it. Right. So we give them a proposal that says, here's what we're going to do. Here's an example. In the proposal, we give example designs of previous designs we've done, which is why it's so important that you do designs for free ahead of time for people um, so that you can build up your portfolio a little bit and then use those as examples and say, here's the type of design that um, you can expect to pay for when, when, uh, when you agree to this. So this is, you know, I forget what they pay for this. Maybe it's one or $2,000 for this design. And, um, and then let's say that they are like, okay, cool. Um, you know what? We don't want to do it ourselves anymore. Will you come, will you come install this? Then we go back to the proposal and we get them a proposal for installation. Now, again, if it's a simple design, we'll do this design and the proposal at the same time. If it's an extensive design, we'll do this design first and then go back and do the proposal. Okay. So they have accepted our proposal, meaning they've given us money or they've written back with a signed contract, we require um, down payment of 25%. You can see here, the bottom right hand piece, you know, there's our total and there's our down payment. For us, down payment is 25%. Not, can't say that's like the number, it's just where we landed initially and it's been working for us. So we're gonna get people on the schedule um, as soon as we get down, uh, down payment. Because we will tell people, look, you know, we were not going to get you on the schedule until we get down payment, just to be fair to everybody. So you can see what our um, two ways of scheduling look like. The first one on the left is I get a, I get a um, proposal signed, and then I go straight to the calendar, and I just say, oh, when's the next good time I can do this? I put it right on the calendar, and I might invite any of my other coworkers to that event that I'm going to need for that job. The other option, which we do, like starting at this time of year, is we have a document called Installations, a Snapshot View. Basically what we're doing right now is, um, because I'm, I'm recording this right now in November, nobody who gets a signed proposal at this point is gonna get an installation until the spring. So we're basically spending November, December, January, February doing consultations, designs, and getting people in the queue for this spring 
install. And we tell everybody, you're gonna get a spring install um, and we'll follow up at the end of winter with the dates because we wanna be really efficient. We don't just wanna start putting people on the schedule as soon as they get a signed proposal. We wanna look at all of our spring installs and say, what makes the most sense to do when? We're gonna do you know, our raised bed gardens first. We're not gonna start planting until um, we can access all of our plants. We're, um, you're gonna, we're gonna do that rainwater harvesting project or rain garden, you know, first we'll dig it. And then we might need to come back with plants later in the year. So it might be a phase, you know, two phase install, all different kinds of possibilities here. All right, so then you gotta come out for the install, but before you do, you're gonna communicate the heck out of your clients. You're gonna you know, tell your clients, okay, a, a month out, this is the date that I've got you scheduled for the install, does that work for you? Okay, great. You're gonna follow up the week before your install and say, just a reminder, we're planning to come out for your install next week. I wanna you know, ask questions like, you know, is there a bathroom accessible that we're able to use? Where do you recommend that we park? I'm gonna say, you know, please make sure that you back your cars out of the driveway before we arrive because we've got trucks full of soil and tools and we wanna make sure we can get those close to the garden. So all kinds of communication things that we wanna make sure we, we let them know about. Um, text, email, do what you gotta to do to, to make sure they know you're coming. Um, oh, let them know what time you're coming. Let them know if, you, um, if there's anywhere, you know, you can, um, leave tools overnight in a safe location so you don't have to load them up and take home. Just go over all these things to make your life easier and to make sure that they're not surprised by anything. So then you're gonna go ahead, you're gonna get there for the install and then you're gonna do all the work that you've been preparing for. You're gonna get your soil and you're gonna get all your wheelbarrows filled and build all your garden beds, plant all your beautiful fruit trees, do what you gotta do there. So after the install, um, of course, we follow up with, um, and, I, and I should have put this in, we follow up with the final invoice. You know, we got to send them a final invoice and make sure that we get paid. Um, and then after that, we're going to follow up with information about coaching or maintenance. Now, maintenance is like things like edible landscape maintenance, where we go, we'll go prune, we'll go mulch, we'll go fertilize, we'll um, cut things back, we'll add compost to garden beds. All those things are maintenance. And there's a copy of a maintenance proposal um, in the handouts that you can check out. Um, there is another opportunity. If we do an install for a raised bed garden, then we want that to be a coaching client. So that's basically like private gardening lessons is what we call it. We say, you know, have your, get yourself a gardening coach. We help people in the winter to develop a crop plan. We map out their garden and say, here's your garden. This is what you're going to plant. This is what's going to happen after that. We send it to them for feedback then we change it up after we get that feedback and make sure that they love it. So um, that is a thing that we, you know, depending on their interest, we'll go out every, every few weeks or every month for a coaching client. A lot of times we aim for every month um, for the coaching clients. And that really is garden tutoring. That's not garden maintenance. That's just like, we, we help teach them about how to do this. Okay, so definitely this is huge. Make sure you go back and get pictures. You know, I'm just looking, I love this picture on the left with the watermelons crawling out of that garden bed. And, you know, that's such a, um, such a better picture than when we dropped that bed off and it was just sitting there without the watermelons growing in it. And that, those pictures are just so helpful to your website, to your marketing, to, um, to see how things are even doing. You know, you can, you can use an excuse of getting photos to, as a reason to go back and see See what, um, see what everything's doing, you know, get feedback on how, how did those, you know, gummies do that I planted there? Are they growing well? Are they fast? How do they compare to the, you know, trifoliate orange that I planted on the other side of the yard? All kinds of possibilities. Um, it's so much feedback to be gained and gleaned when you go back and um, visit your sites, which is one of the reasons why maintenance is so amazing because then you get free feedback. Actually, you get paid for feedback because then you're out there doing the work to maintain the landscape and you're also uh, getting to see how things are doing which is so informative for your future designs you know being able to get better and better at design that just comes hand in hand with seeing your previous designs and seeing how they are growing over time lastly um before we we finish out this you know presentation i want to make sure you all know you've got a bunch of different handouts that are associated with this presentation. So I've got example proposals. I've got a response 
you know, to an email, if somebody writes in, what does my email response look like? You've got this actual presentation, you've got our design questionnaire, all the different questions that we ask people before they come to a consult. Um, so lots of different great handouts here, maintenance proposals, um, you name it. It's, it, this should be hopefully really helpful. Um, this stuff took us a really long time to elaborate. Hopefully it gives you all a better idea of a place to start if you don't have this stuff already. If you do have this stuff, then fantastic. Thank you all so much and um, hope you enjoy the rest of the presentations.